Hello the internet, Dylan here. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about mechanics, uh, specifically game mechanics of LARPs and tabletop games, and how understanding the way they interact with culture and setting is essential to getting what you want out of a game, and to making sure your players do what your vision is for them to do. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the premise first, and that way we can move on to some specific examples. Uh, people are rational actors. This includes characters in games, and specifically includes characters that are trying to achieve a goal. Uh, naturally, people in real life and in, in games, be they video games, LARPs, or tabletops, thinking sentient beings are always going to try to do what they're trying to do in the way that most benefits them and their goal, and least taxes them in terms of resources. It's called being a rational actor. It's called making an optimal play. Let's take for a very simple example, uh, let's say that you are playing Magic the Gathering, and you have two moves that are completely identical in every way, so they, they cost you the same amount of resources, they cost you absolutely the same amount of everything, they affect the board state in exactly the same way, the only difference being that one wins you the game and one doesn't, right? So these two actions are identical, one wins you the game and one does not. A rational actor will literally always choose to win the game when given the opportunity, and not choose to not win the game when given the opportunity. That is a fundamental part of, of logical, rational action, is they're going to choose the action that, that most quickly and efficiently achieves their objective. So now that we're thinking about that, uh, we can analyze it a little bit and realize that that also becomes, that pattern, once we understand it, becomes a vector for behavioral manipulation for a game master or somebody who's designing a LARP, a tabletop, or a video game. If there is a behavior you want your players to engage in, and you make that behavior mechanically beneficial, if you make that behavior enforced by the rules of the game on an out-of-play, mechanical, gritty, crunchy level, you're going to see more people do that naturally. Of course, if something is going to achieve their overall mechanical objective more effectively, they're going to do it. You know that they're going to do it, so you make the thing that you know they're going to do be parallel with what you would want them to do to enforce the vision, the theme, and the setting of the game. All right. So let's let's go with a hands-on example. Vampire the Masquerade uh, as a LARP. It recently got a new system that's super awesome. I'm going to talk a little bit about the old system, then talk about the new system and the ways that it fixes the problems I'm about to bring up. Uh, so Vampire the Masquerade is a very challenging setting to play. Uh, it is a setting that is, it's, they call it gothic punk, which is in itself pretty hard to grapple with when you think about it. It combines a million different themes and ideas and setting aspects. Most importantly though, it is at its best when players are portraying flawed characters that make bad decisions, that make decisions that are bad for themselves. In other words, they, uh, the setting is designed around characters that are not always rational actors. Okay. Um, now, some role players obviously will not be a rational actor because you know they they have this very strong concept of what their character is, and they're going to follow that. And those are those are your top tier role players. Those are the absolute best kind of role players. But you can't necessarily dismiss uh, the inclination of some players to play a mechanically sound option or to, to make the mechanically sound decision. Uh, so the way this interfaces with the Vampire the Masquerade setting is that in Vampire the Masquerade you have elders, so you have very, very old vampires. And these elders are feared because they are supposed to be always machinating and manipulating, deceiving and controlling and pulling all the strings. They are the, the, the masters from the shadows of vampire society. In fact, the setting as a very big point uh, points out that elders rarely get their hands dirty. Elders have Ancilla, which are like middle-aged vampires, for lack of a better, better term, uh, and neonates, which are very young vampires, who will go out and do what they need to do in a physical sense. The elders are more or less predisposed to hang out, talk to other elders, and pursue their own agenda through agents. That's the way the setting is intended to be. But the original Vampire the Masquerade LARP rules made it mechanically superior in every way to be an elder. You had more traits, which are what you used to win tests. You had more abilities that would let you gain an advantage in tests. You had access to a greater number of disciplines. You paid the same amount of XP for everything as everybody else. You had the same morality. Across the board, 
you were either the same or better than a vampire that was younger than you, period, with no exceptions. So naturally, what you saw is a strong predilection towards players playing elder characters that in the setting should be hands-off working through their agents and their minions. You saw a lot of people playing elders that would go out and just handle the problem themselves. And because the mechanics form the basis of their character's judgment, you can't blame them for that. The character is just acting rationally. Why would I send someone out if I personally have a higher chance of succeeding on the action, right? All other things held constant, if my younger minion has the same set of abilities as me and I'm simply better than him at it, I would never turn to him if only one person can go and there's the same chance of failure slash success as a baseline, right? I'm going to want to do it myself. So naturally you saw a lot of people playing elders who would just be very combative. They would go out and they would just fight right they would just go win the fight and they would leave all the younger vampires in the dust it sucks it's not fun for the people playing the younger vampires it's just a very unfortunate situation the way you resolve that is by adjusting the mechanics such that there's an incentive to play the game you are supposed to be playing as an elder right um so let's fast forward a little bit by night studios releases a new rule set in this new rule set there are two very important things that fix the majority of the problems i've just described first of all they add a different set of benefits for each social class and each age category of vampire from the youngest all the way up to the oldest. Five different categories, all of them unique, all of them with different benefits. So your older vampires have much more potent powers of the blood. Uh, they have increased social standing in the Camarilla, which is the default setting. So they have their own unique set of benefits. They basically can't be questioned in public. They can warn people and force them to leave areas and, and have a lot of social clout intrinsically which, let's go back, enforces and incentivizes them towards behaving in a social way because the primary, the primary advantage you get from being an elder is social status. Um, whereas your younger vampires, they learn things more quickly. Um, they are able to more easily interact with the mortal world because they're still more human. They haven't become as inhuman as these ancient vampiric monsters are. Which, of course, makes them very good at doing a thing that the elders themselves are much less good at. Which naturally makes it a much more uh, a much more tantalizing proposition for the elder with the superior social status and superior powers of the blood to have minions, and these minions are of worth to the elder because they are literally mechanically better at and more efficiently able to perform certain tasks. So, by changing the mechanic, by changing the social standing mechanic, and by changing uh, the the experience mechanic there such that different social classes and age categories get different benefits you've created a stratification that is intended by the setting that functions mechanically in parallel with the themes of the setting huge perfect example of what I'm talking about that the mechanics inform the way your players will act the way the players you will, will act makes up the story so mechanics inform actions create story if you want to influence the story you want the story to go a certain way you start up here, you change the mechanics, that changes the actions, that changes the story. So there you go. Uh, next time you're trying to start a game up, if you're writing your own or you're simply trying to select a system uh, that is good for what you're going for, be cognizant of that. Look at the mechanics. Think, well, if I'm a rational actor and I have these options, what am I going to choose in a certain circumstance? And understand that that's what you should assume your players will do, right? And you should pick a set of mechanics in which the predictable a action is in line with the sort of story you want to tell. It's a little bit of a, a, a weird thing. There are corner cases here. I welcome, obviously, comments, questions, and, and critiques and uh, expansion of the discourse. Please re reply either by comment on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, with a video. I don't care. Uh, I love talking about this stuff. Nothing I'm saying is gospel. There are corner cases where the stuff I'm saying doesn't apply. But as a general idea of theory, looking at the mechanics of the, as the natural law of the universe that you're in, right? They're, they're like physics where, you know, I've got gravity, right? The guy in D&D &D has, well, I will hit 45% of the time. He can rationally, feasibly be aware of that mechanical structure. It's like the laws of physics in the D&D universe. Um... Yeah, it's cool. It's interesting. Let me know what you think, and see you next time.